G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Round one of the 2019 AFL season is just around the corner and so it's time for us to turn True Footy Reacts into a weekly show. What I want to do with this show is each week give you a preview of the upcoming round as well as a bit of an analysis of the previous week. Then, like every good preview show, I'll give you my tips. I'll be doing my best to make this a weekly show throughout the year Bearing in mind I do go to Europe in July, so it may get patchy around then. But for now, you can expect an episode every week. I don't know about you guys, but my excitement for the new season has been a little bit subdued. As many of you probably know, I'm a massive Eagles fan, so I've kind of just been basking in the Premiership glory over the summer and haven't really been looking too forward to round one. But now that it's just around the corner, it's getting very exciting. AFLX and JLT are all well and good, but it's not quite the real stuff. Especially if you're like me and you don't have Foxtel. But nonetheless, the real stuff is here, so we might as well crack straight into it. So in the first game of the season, as always, we've got Carlton and Richmond. Probably one of the more uninspiring scheduled season openers that we've ever had, but for some reason they're persisting with it. Richmond, as you'd expect, are real hot favourites going into this game. They're paying $1.15 a win, whereas Carlton are going at $5.50 on Sportsbet. Now Carlton, you could have to say, had a pretty successful preseason. They had that unexpected win over Essendon in the first game and then pushed Collingwood all the way. Now I know it's only JLT, but you can still expect that they would derive a fair bit of confidence out of those games. For Carlton, probably the biggest story out of the preseason was the performances of number one pick Sam Walsh. He had 28 possessions in the first game and I think 23 in the second game. He's looking like a real good early bet for the Rising Star Award. Another young fellow who probably doesn't get talked about as much as his teammates, but I've always been a big fan of, and that's David Cunningham. He bobbed up for three goals in the first game and maybe not this year but I can see him being a real good player in the future. Like I've said in other videos I think the Blues have really good youth but it's going to take a while before they can really consolidate that and get experience into those guys so they're good enough to compete with teams like Richmond. Richmond on the other hand had a pretty ideal JLT series. They had two close wins against Melbourne and Hawthorne, two finalists from last year. It's probably not so much about the result of those games that's important but I think it's really good match preparation if you can win close games in the preseason. Especially against Hawthorne where they came from 40 points down. I think it's just about the only time you'll ever see Richmond travelled Tasmania as well. But to come back from 40 points down shows that their mindset is in a good place and in particular Trent Cotchen was pretty fantastic in that game. The youngsters are still coming along, Jack Higgins is still doing Jack Higgins things and, and Noah, Noah Bolter popped up as a young forward ruck option. It may be a while before he's really strutting his stuff but, but he is seriously talented and very athletic for a big guy. As there's no real form lines available, you can only really go on paper. And despite the fact that Carlton pushed them quite far last year, I don't think Richmond's going to let them do that again. I predict Richmond win this game by 54 points. The second game of the round on Friday night is probably the match of the round. We've got Collingwood paying $1.63 to beat Geelong, who are paying $2.28. The Pies probably ticked all the relevant boxes over the preseason with wins over Fremantle and Carlton and pretty much all their midfielders played pretty well. Adding beams to that midfield really makes them a formidable opposition. It may be a while before that dynamic is fully developed and they really start dominating games, but nonetheless, it's going to be very, very hard to shut them all down. On the other hand, the Cats are a pretty difficult side to get a read on. We know the upside that the elite players on their team have, but I think how they go this year is really going to come down to the strength of their bottom six. I think they do match up pretty well against Collingwood. I know they beat them last year by about 21 points when Collingwood were doing pretty alright. Nonetheless, you can only really tip on paper and I have to go with my gut and that's Collingwood by 18 points. The next game is Melbourne hosting Port Adelaide at the MCG. Now, as we all know, Dees were one of the red-hot teams of the competition last year before they got absolutely obliterated in Perth. Their JLT series was a bit of a mixed bag, losing to both Richmond and Brisbane. The midfielders, in particular Oliver and Brayshaw, performed pretty well. So much so that I actually traded out Dangerfield from my fantasy team to get Brayshaw in because I just think he's going to score that many points this year. I do think Melbourne go into this game as the more fancied team. It's hard to give the power a big chance in this one. As we all know, they've lost some players... They're a bit of an unknown quantity and they don't typically play well at the MCG. As a result, I'm going to have to go with Melbourne by 34 points. Another one of the more exciting fixtures for this round, for me anyway, is Adelaide hosting Hawthorne at the Adelaide Oval. The Crows did have a pretty good JLT recording two wins, but as we all know, JLT doesn't mean a whole lot. Personally, I think that Adelaide side is stacked with talent and I see a return to form for them this year. As we know, the Hawks are without Tom Mitchell, who obviously won the Brownlow medal, so he's having a significant impact on their team. They also had some indifferent JLT form, which again, doesn't mean a whole lot, but I just think Adelaide can go into the game with more confidence. I can really see the Crows making Adelaide Oval a fortress once again in 2019. On the plus side for the Hawks, Jago O'Meara is potentially one to watch this year. And when I say one to watch, I mean like on an elite level. 
His game against the Tigers was absolutely fantastic and he recorded 35 possessions and kicked one absolutely brilliant goal. But as I've said in other videos, I think their midfield is just a little bit light on for depth. So I'm gonna have to tip Adelaide here by 27 points. The next game represents a tricky proposition for last year's premiers as they come against Brisbane Lions at the Gabba on Saturday night. The Lions have probably been one of the top teams in this JLT series and will go into the game with a lot of confidence. Lockie Neal and Jared Lyons will make their debut for the club and they've been really good this preseason. And I just think there's so much young firepower in that Brisbane team that will make them dangerous for anyone playing them at the gather. On the Eagles side of the coin, they've probably looked one of the most round one ready sides of any team this JLT. Dom Sheet has carried his grand final form into the preseason recording 38 and 40 possession gains so far. And he's probably close to the best performed player across the whole league in JLT. The Eagles are a reasonable chance to be without both Josh Kennedy and Jamie Cripps, but it does appear that their replacements, Oscar Allen and Jack Petricelli, are adequate replacements for the time being. I'm tipping a thriller but I think the Eagles will win by nine points. The Bulldogs then host Sydney at Marvel Stadium, and I'm reminded of that round one 2017 clash where it was the grand final replay. Hopefully we get a game just as good as that. These two teams have obviously gone in two very opposite directions since that grand final. The Swans have done their best to stay relevant at the top of the table, and the Dogs have really kind of attacked the draft and tried to rebuild, and a lot of that hasn't been voluntary. I know it was only JLT, but the Dogs losing to the Gold Coast isn't a great confidence booster going into round one. On the other hand, I am a big proponent of the Doggies midfield, and I think the midfield of Bont, McRae, Hunter, supported by Dunkley, Wallace, and potentially Liberatore, could match up with almost any team in the competition. That being said, it's hard to see them overcoming the battle hard on the Swans. The Swans have been a bit of a mixed bag this JLT, but I don't know if you can read too much into that because they're an exceptionally professional club and they'll probably come out firing. The fitness of Heaney and Buddy going to this game could sway the result, but nonetheless, I'm going to have to go with Sydney by 23 points. Next up, we have the Saints and the Gold Coast, an absolute blockbuster on our hands. St Kilda are another team that I find it really hard to get a read on. I think it's very easy to write them off, but I do genuinely believe they've underachieved for the talent they have on their list. They did have two wins in JLT over North Melbourne and the Bulldogs, which might restore a bit of confidence, and maybe they turn a corner. Gold Coast, on the other hand, Things are only really going from bad to worse. Thompson's just done his ACL, and in addition to all the players they've lost, it's really hard to see them being that competitive this year. I was really looking forward to see Isaac Rankin play early in 2019, but I don't know if he's gonna be fit. I think he's just done his hammy. For the Gold Coast, this may be one of their more winnable games for the year, potentially, but nonetheless, I have to go with St. Kilda by 39 points. GWS and Essendon is yet another contender for match of the round. I would say these are two pretty evenly matched teams. I'm aware last year that the Bombers got the job done against GWS in Sydney as well, so that there's evidence that they match up well against them. I do know the Giants had injury woes last year and they probably didn't perform as well as they could have. I do genuinely believe that the Giants midfield, if they're all fit, is probably one of the better dynamics in the league. Now the Bombers on paper are a very talented team, but because they're not quite proven, it does make me hesitant. It's almost like a battle between the popular choice to bolt and the, probably the most undersold team this year. I think I'm gonna have to go with the home team in this situation and tip the Giants by seven points. Had this game been in Melbourne, I would probably be tipping differently. And finally, for the last game of the round, we've got Fremantle hosting North Melbourne at Optus Stadium. This one for me is a pretty hard one to tip. Fremantle have looked pretty lackluster this preseason, it has to be said. But you also have to bear in mind they've been without their main midfield man, Nat Fife. And at the same time, they're trying to adjust to a completely different forward structure and strategy. To me, it looks quite evident that they haven't quite worked out how to deliver it to a forward line that can actually take a mark. It doesn't look like there's too much system going forward, so it might take a while before they really work out how to transition. North, as we all know, recruited pretty well going into this season. Although it does appear that Aaron Hall might not be available with a knee injury. They had some promising JLT performances from youngsters like LDU and Bailey Scott, who were both a chance to play for round one. But they will be hoping that mid-tier midfielders like Paul Ahern and Dob Tyson can really lift and consolidate that next layer of their midfield. I'm actually kind of surprised that North are paying $2.13 because I do think the Roos will win this. I'm going to say North Melbourne win a thriller by four points. Anyway guys, let me know what you think of my predictions. Comment below, roast me for my tips. No, but in all serious, I do like hearing from you guys and I do read most of the comments. Also, if you want to keep chatting to us, I would look in the description of this video and find our Discord link. If you don't have the app, uh, you should check it out, but we have a really good community going down there and it's growing by the day. I'm also leaving the invite code to our AFL Fantasy League. Anyone is welcome to join. So if you play AFL Fantasy, join True Footy Official. As always, if you haven't already or if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and keep up with all our weekly content. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you for round two.